So Dragonfly DB is a drop-in replacement of Redis and it offers 25 times the throughput. This is the first video in the Dragonfly DB internal series and in this one, we go through its architecture, design decisions, trade-offs and implementation specifics. But before that, some numbers to set the context. When you run Dragonfly DB on a C7 G9 16x large instance which contains 64 cores and 128 GB RAM, you get a staggering 6.43 million operations per second. And that's humongous. Right? The best part of Dragonfly DB is that it is designed to get the max out of your underlying hardware. That's what it is optimizing for. Now, because it is a drop-in replacement of Redis, the key question comes in, hey, what's the difference? The key difference, the key difference between Redis and Dragonfly DB is that Redis is single-threaded, while Dragonfly DB is multi-threaded. Let's understand this in a bit more detail. Now, because Redis is single-threaded, it suffers from a fundamental limitation. The fundamental limitation of that is that even if your machine has 64 cores, Redis can only utilize one. Other 63 cores are just getting wasted. This leads to the fact that you, in case of Redis, it would very quickly reach the maximum point under load, beyond which it cannot, it cannot utilize the hardware. Now this is where you would be requiring to go and scale it horizontally, making it a cluster to maintain the required throughput that you need. Right? Now, as soon as you horizontally scale Redis, you have a cluster, a bit of nodes, which means you need to ensure there's a unique, like there's a good key distribution and you need to manage the cluster, which eventually bloats up your infrastructure cost. On the other hand, Dragonfly DB is multi-threaded. Now, let's go a bit of detail on how it is implemented. Now, because Dragonfly DB is multi-threaded, you would say, hey, there are multiple threads. Now, won't it bloat up all of my threads? No. What Dragonfly DB does, it uses fibers. Fibers are lightweight threads, very similar to Go routines. Right? Now, here, a very simple schematic way to look at it is this diagram. So, you have a bunch of fibers, which are lightweight threads. Then you have OS threads, which are fewer in number. And then you have CPU cores. The whole idea is, that your fibers, which are your user managed threads, right? they are multiplexed on fewer OS threads, which then chase CPU for its execution. Right? Now, what is an advantage of this? The key advantage of this is you can have large number of fibers, number one. So your unit of concurrency is very granular and you can move faster. Second, because there are large number of fibers which are executing or which are proceeding in parallel, your OS threads cannot remain blocked for a long time because there is always some fiber which is ready with some kind of execution right now this is where they use uh, dragonfly db is written in c++ uh, again it's open source you can check out their code base and dragonfly is in c++ they use library called boost.fibers to deal with fibers and do user level concurrency management right okay that's one but second and most important part, which I absolutely loved, and I'm not even exaggerating when I say this, is the shared nothing architecture. Now, when you think of Redis or any in-memory key value store, you would always think of the fact that, hey, there will be a hash table. And now because Dragonfly DB is multi-threaded, you would think of an implementation that you have multiple threads trying to access the same global hash table. So which means you need to have you need to get a mutual exclusive access on it and then read the key write the key whatever you're doing you do with that now this would lead to a lot of contention so what dragonfly db did is they went with shared nothing architecture now this is where the beauty lies of dragonfly db and i just absolutely loved it so what they did is they the entire key space like whatever key value that you insert in dragonfly db they shard this into n parts where n is less than equal to the number of logical CPU cores. For example, if you have six, 64 core machine, then your n would be less than equal to 64. Right? Now, the whole idea is that each thread, each data thread gets its own exclusive key space, which means it's not a single hash table in memory. There are several hash tables, which are all mutually exclusive handled by one thread each. Right? Now, these are data threads. Who owns and handles the data part of it? Right? Now, imagine this. This mimics as an, as an orchestrated group of Redis processes. Because in case of Redis, it can only leverage one CPU. It has one hash table where all the key values are stored. 
right? So if you imagine this as multi-threaded implement, like even like Dragon by DB's multi-threaded implementation, you can very well drop parallels with it being your n orchestrated group of Redis processes. That's how it runs, and these are all mutually exclusive subsets of your entire data, right? Now this is the shared nothing architecture that goes on. Right? And it's such a beautiful implementation in subsequent videos, we'll go into even more details of it, but this is amazingly well designed, right? Now that you have in deep, now you have N hash tables in memory. The first thing comes in, which hash table owns which data, right? It's very simple. They went with simple hash based ownership that depending on what key value operation comes in, it would pick one of the hash tables to own that particular piece of data. Key pass to the hash function mod n, you would know which hash table it needs to recite to and it goes there. But think of the implementation that when my connection comes, if I already have a data thread that owns this thing, when my connection comes, if my connection thread also tries to access this, then there is still the same problem of contention happening, right? Which is where they don't do this. What they went with to minimize the locking and synchronization overhead, which means avoiding mutex as much as they can, what they went ahead with a simple message bus implementation. The whole idea is you have bunch of threads, which are data threads or shard threads that own the data. And then there are IO threads, which handle the connections. When your incoming connection comes and wants to serve, perform certain operations, they don't just directly go access the hash table and do it. No. They put an event in a message bus. Now, again, these are not multiple machines. It's a single machine. Message bus is a simple queue that all of these threads share. On this message bus, the event goes, we'll go into details in subsequent videos anyway, right? And the thread which is required to access it, access it, it runs the, like, completes the action and puts the result back. It reaches the IO thread and it then sends back to the user. So the entire communication across all the threads is done via the message bus. Again, the beautiful part is these are not separate machines. Message bus is not a QQ. It's just a simple Q data structure, very similar to it, right? But that's the beauty of this implementation, the shared nothing architecture. Now, if you observe, they are doing the best they can to minimize the locking and minimize the synchronization overhead, which is why they went with message bus architecture, right? And again, I would highly recommend you to prototype this. It's amazing. The code base of Dragonfly DB is right there on GitHub. Just a Google search away. Highly recommend you to check that out. I'll anyway link it in this video, right? So do spend some time going through it. It's fab. It's fab. There's tons of learning with that, but this is just a first video in the series. Subsequent videos, we'll go deeper into how requests are handled, the transaction model of it, and implementation of its key data structures like sorted sets and dash tables. Some beautiful optimizations over there. So yeah. This is all what I wanted to cover in this one. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.